Welcome back to another episode of Guess in the Mecca. And in today's episode, a short episode, I'm going to be talking about the connection between Evangelion and Sonny Boy, or at least the one in which I think to exist. These two anime are ones that have struck me, uh, one which has kind of maybe changed my life, you could argue, and another one which has just really made me think in recent times. And so in this episode and this short episode, I want to talk about where these two anime sort of intersect and the indirect conversation in which they have. So that is episode 113 of the podcast, Evangelion and Sunny Boy in Indirect Conversation. Here we have two original anime, one in which is an all-time favourite of mine, Neon Genesis Evangelion, directed of course by Hideaki Anno and written by Anno and his team, a whole host of people, and a more recent favourite of mine next to that being Sunny Boy, which is one of my favourite anime of 2021, aired in the summer of that year and is written by of course Shingo Natsume and is directed by him as well and he has a big influence on that show. I like to say that it's basically his brainchild and upon watching these shows I I felt like there was a resonance between them and so I'm going to walk you through a bit of kind of a, a how I got here in the first place and why I think these shows are connected and just to clarify when I say connected I don't mean that uh, this isn't some sort of theory video that they're canonically connected and they're directly referencing each other and they know that that's the case but more so I think they touch on a very similar thing and that really struck a chord with me. So just a bit of a like anecdote, it's the summer of 2021 and I'm watching Sunny Boy as you do as the person that really likes original anime and stuff. And upon watching Sunny Boy as an Evangelion fan, I did the very typical Evangelion fan thing where, you know, we only watch an one anime and therefore I'm like, okay, this is kind of giving me Evangelion vibes <laughs> because, you know, anything that talks about reality obviously is Evangelion. And so <laughs> um, that kind of struck me straight away that like, I feel like I'm witnessing some sort of crossover. But although that is, I do joke when I say that, and although it is kind of a natural, funny thing I do in my head f f every now and again, I, I did that with Wonder Egg Priority as well. Um, but I think there's actually a really interesting dynamic between these works. To explain what I really mean, we have to go to the end of Neon Genesis Evangelion. Neon Genesis Evangelion ends at this really great point where Shinji acknowledges and finally understands the fact that he's able to sort of control his own reality after Shinji's time within instrumentality, but also just the real world as well, constantly contemplating his own relationships and his own life, identity and existence. The series ends at this high point where he finally makes this breakthrough after you know all these struggles and realizes that he has control over himself, despite the fact that he's either in instrumentality or wherever he is, he has control over his reality. And that's kind of the parting message of Eva in my opinion. But something that was a big head scratcher for me when I first watched it and even when I rewatched it was what exactly does that even mean? What does it really mean to control one's reality? And this is something that I sort of raised all the way back in episode 50 of the podcast. I doubt many people are listening then um, when we covered the final episodes of the anime. And I'm not going to lie, I don't think I did it very well, but I was very sort of confused as to what it really meant to, uh, I, I guess, mean, what, what does it mean once he's broken out of the shell and has broken through? Is he still in instrumentality? Is he not? These were questions that were in my head. It just the notion of control and controlling reality was something that was definitely bothering me. I think I've kind of come to terms with it now. And as we'll show in this episode, uh, I think the, we have another anime to kind of answer that question in some sort of way. It doesn't really attempt to say, did Shinji win? It's more of he's addressed something, but is addressing the question and addressing it the solution. And I don't think Arno tries to answer that at the end of Evangelion. That is something for you to figure out. The question really lies as to not really is the person satisfied with their ending. Is Shinji satisfied with his ending? Yes, he is. 
but the more the thing I'm trying to emphasize on is more of what is reality in itself. Is this the reality which should have been addressed? Is this the reality? Is this a genuine reality, or can we never tell? And that is what I'm really trying to say. I should point out, kind of in response to old me, that Evangelion's conception of change, I think, and being able to change one's reality is much more abstract and philosophical relative to Sonny Boys, which we'll look at, um, which feels much more practical and physical and in the bounds of its sci-fi premise. But I think it still answers that question nonetheless. That being said, of course, Arno and Code not defining what it really means to control one's reality and showing that practically. I think that adds to a lot of the mystery and intrigue and message of Eva, which is partially to reflect on yourself and reflect on what your reality looks like and whether you feel as if you are being controlled by other things and to look inside yourself. And Shinji and everyone else looks at us at those final moments of Evangelion. So I think the blurry nature of that conclusion is fine, it's beautiful, it's iconic, but there was still something about it that I couldn't get over even though I loved it. But approximately 26 years later, a neat show called Sunny Boy comes along and kind of answers that question for me. Once again, this is a show directed and also completely written by Shingo Natsume. And so we are, of course, coming at this question from a different perspective, but I think it still responds to this idea of what does con one controlling one's reality entail? What does this mean once we are aware of it? And it kind of follows off from where Evangelion stopped in a few ways that I really quite like. Without giving too much away, Sonny Boy, as, as I labeled it before, is Shingo Natsume's original brainchild, essentially about a school class who get transported kind of out of nowhere to this completely different world, and they have to kind of deal with the consequences of that and figure out what the heck is going on. Um, very strange anime, but I really do love it, and if you haven't seen it, I, I recommend watching it. Just a super quick interruption from future me, <laughs> um, just to say that if you want to go into Sunny Boy completely blind, if you haven't already seen it, I recommend just skipping straight to the next timestamp as although I don't think this information will completely ruin your experience, it might take away from it depending on how you view spoilers, etc. So uh, skip to the next timestamp if you don't want to hear a bit more detail about the story. Two of the most interesting characters, though, in this show are probably the most, I'd say, okay, there's one that's kind of average, and there's one who is kind of average, but not also average at the same time. Um, This is Nagara, but also another character known as Yambiko. But it's not really just because they are like normal people and behave in the very sort of average, typical way. But I think it's what, but it's because they both, in a way, discover the fact that they have the ability to control their realities in some fashion, very much like Shinji does. Uh, Nagara has the ability to essentially make worlds, and Yambiko has the ability to manifest Best what's in his mind. Again, it's much more physical relative to Evangelion, but it is very much presented in a similar way in being able to steer not just where you are, but how you view things and everything. Um, but upon discovering this in the main body of the series, which you eventually get to, one finds out that there's still so much that comes with it. And this is where I think Sunny Boy adds to Evangelion's conversation that it initially started. While Evangelion ends by suggesting that we can control our reality, Sunny Boy deals with what it means to control your reality, what, what comes afterwards. And what Sunny Boy shows, it, it, and it's maybe a bit of a, I don't think it's a, a pessimistic take, but it's definitely one that is much more realist, I guess. It's the fact that those external pressures do not go away. If anything, your control and the ability to have control puts even more pressure on you because once you know when something goes wrong, you instantly blame yourself. You were the one in the driver's seat and thus things become a lot harder because you know that you are in control, but yet there are still so many things 
outside that you can't control as well. The struggle for finding purpose also becomes much more difficult because when you have all these eyes looking at you and realizing that you're special but you don't realize how special you are that creates this almost dissonance between you and everybody else and your ability and you which once again creates a lot of pressure one of the richest parts of sunny boy in my opinion are the character dynamics not because they're all like chummy with each other as a class because they're not and the show very much displays that that they the cliques still exist within the classroom and those very uh, awkward relationships are very much there in this show but that dynamic between the classmates is really interesting and that creates a lot of pressure i i think we kind of get this dynamic in even Gelly as well where of course you get Asuka who's constantly shouting at Shinji to kind of grow up you have Rei who is the almost backup for Shinji if things go wrong but of course Shinji does not want to mess up what he's doing because then Rei who is like injured as heck will then have to go in and and then fight whatever angel they're doing you of course have Misato who has her messaging you have Gendo Shinji's father and all that you have all these external forces but Yambiko and I guess Nagara knowing that they have some sort of control over what is going on creates even more pressure because everyone knows you also can control things or at least in the case of Nagara everyone is very much aware that he has some really cool ability and this ability to control the reality in which they are in and the ability to go back home to not the world in which they're transported to but back to their own lives and that produces so much more pressure I, and it's it, it's probably the thing that makes that elevates sonny boy from being kind of just a, an anime to i think a bit more of a a bit more of a social commentary and i think that's what made it very enticing to watch because you could draw out all these things on the dynamics between people and all that so that was really cool honestly I went on a bit of a tangent there, but essentially Sonny Boy suggests that those relationships and those relations and those pressures are still there. And these aren't things that we can unfortunately escape, but we have to learn to kind of live with them and manage them and get better at building these relationships. But Arno's, Arno and Co's parting message, I think, is much more optimistic in the sense that you are free when you realize you have control and you know that you can be free, whereas Sonny Boy says that you kind of have and that's me i think says you have to do a bit more work to get there that being said i still think sonny boy and even Gelion, at least overall are optimistic works both natsume and ano and co are very supportive of the idea that people have the ability to grow improve and change and that's what i think is the core of both of these series two boys and school children and they're both kind of coming of age stories in a way uh, they both have the ability to become something better than once the, what they once were at the beginning of the show and they have the ability to change and improve themselves which again i think is fundamentally optimistic the fact that there is room for progress and for development is is a really nice thing that they both tap into even if sometimes both shows do get a bit dark or a bit heavy although sunny boy again does take a bit more of a physical stance to it this isn't to say that they can completely just alter the world around them it's almost the stoic notion in which they can control you can control yourself but you can't control your externalities but the fact that you can control yourself is all that matters because once you can control yourself you can view everything differently you can view everything much more optimistically and change the trajectory in which you travel in your own life because you are the only thing you can control but i think both of them kind of say that that's enough that being said, I just find it really interesting how you have these ever so slightly different perspectives in Sunny Boy and even Gellion. Anno and Co's story ends with knowing that you can change things. And, and I think that's, that, that is a whole message in itself. Why, the fact that it ends that way, that control is the end of it all. Uh, control is the ultimate virtue, knowing you can control yourself. And Sunny Boy really begins I uh, think quotation marks sort of begins with knowing you can control yourself and what that all means. Uh, how can you genuinely make a change? Well, yeah, that that's the point I really want to get at. Even Gellion again is we we said it before. It's very abstract in in the sense of control and how 
it's not really about materially controlling things, but Sunny Boy takes that very end and 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 talks about how you can change things. It's practical. How do you work with the people around you? How do you interface with the world around you to genuinely make a change for yourself once you know that you have control? So I think Sunny Boy lifts a lot of what even Galeon ended with and takes it a bit further in this really cool indirect conversation. The unfortunate thing about both Evangelion and Sunny Boy discourse though, now not, not amongst everyone, but amongst people that are critics of the show, I'd say, is that they label them as pretentious. And I really want to get rid of this word pretentious in media because I think there's a lot to take from these shows. And by calling them pretentious and almost like they're putting up a front, uh, which I, I think, don't get me wrong, I kind of think performance and pretension is the core of media <laughs> to be fair and animation particularly that does kind of get into the oh are animated actors claim but i think both sunny boy and evangelion are very very profound works that are worth exploring because yeah they might not necessarily make the greatest amount of sense to someone watching for the first time i can understand that but there's a treasure trove of ideas relating to thought and uh, change and progress and things that I think you can genuinely resonate to. I don't think the show has to be completely transparent and explain itself entirely, even if it is veiled in, you know, these sci-fi plots, but they both have very interesting things to explore, notably again, like this stoic idea of controlling yourself and not your externalities and uh, what it really means to grow up and stuff like that. So pretension isn't the best word I'd use for, or pretentious isn't the word I'd really use for describing a show like Evangelion or Sunny Boy. I'd say they're rich with ideas more than anything. And I think a show rich with ideas is a good thing. And what we need more of in animation, these experiences which you can truly just submerge yourself into and take things from it for, for your own life as well. I'm not saying, oh, Evangelion is going to teach you how to live or Sunny Boy should teach you how to live per se at least letter by letter but you can learn something from it and I think that's the core of all things and even if it means learning it through a performance or through his pretensions that that's enough for it to like be a good show conversations between media just in general are just so interesting to me and something that I want to maybe talk about more in the podcast I, I don't want to turn it into like a, a just a milking thing where I'm just pointing out like similarities and differences but uh, I, I'd love to talk about this much more because I think it points out a very crucial thing which is the fact that one every like piece of media is different even if it's ever so slightly but the fact that there are discourses to be had between media like i i don't think one analyzing a show purely has to analyze it through just that show alone and the shell of that show alone because there's so much more to explore beyond just that single show and there are discourses that are created between them it also points out something really important which is the fact that every writer every director every artist thinks ever so slightly differently even if they are on a similar track on a similar path they all uh, they all kind of come to different conclusions by virtue of just being a different person having different experiences different ideas and that's just what makes anime really cool and media and art really cool i basically just describe what originality is but uh originality is a really cool thing when you think of it it's just everyone just has something ever so slightly different to say and naturally they eventually comment on what other people have to say even if they don't intend to and and that's what's so interesting about the anime landscape which has been here for decades upon decades and we see these works constantly talk to each other even if they don't mean to and i just find that really uh, fascinating uh, and i think you should too kind of I, I can't tell you how to think but i hope you do too um so yeah even Gelion and sunny boy's conversation indirect conversation is just a really great example of originality and how, how beautiful that is as a concept
Thank you for listening to yet another episode of Gas in the Mecca. A bit of a shorter one, I think, I hope. Um, <laughs> but um, thank you for listening. As always, it, you, your support is very appreciated, both watching, but you can support the podcast even more <laughs> if you wish to. You can, of course, subscribe on YouTube and like and comment and that sort of stuff. Tell me what you think about the relationship between Sunny Boy and Evangelion. Am I reaching? Am I not reaching? Is this like a really great comment? Terry between the two are there other things that relate even more tell me all that in in the comments and just anything you want really <laughs> and also just if you want to support the show on audio platforms you can by leaving a rating on spotify and a review on apple podcasts and if you do leave a review on apple Podcasts, like a worded review i will read it out at the beginning of the episode as a way of saying thanks so Thank you for listening, and I will see you on another episode of Gas in the Mecca. The music in this episode goes as follows. Chill, Adventure Time Revised, On the Road Again, and Synthwave by Alex. And all this music is done by Alex McCulloch and is under the public domain.